Welcome back to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorby, your host. I'm with Jared Fabriello, Principal JPF Securities, jpfsecurities.com, our corporate counsel. All right, Jared, thanks for being back on the show. Thank you, Michael. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm glad you're here. Well, let's talk about the defense industry and firearms. ITAR has seen some major changes recently. Explain to our viewing audience what ITAR uh, is and how it's going to be affected as we move forward. Sure. So at JPF Securities Law, we, we love defense companies. We love the defense industrial base. It's an important part of the Texas economy and the national economy. ITAR is something that we specialize in. Uh, we help small businesses uh, with their federal compliance and, uh, you know, in particular ITAR, which uh, affects any of the exports or imports of munitions. So as Michael mentioned, uh, there's been some major changes uh, with the ITAR recently. Um, ITAR uh, is the uh, International Traffic in Arms Regulation. and what it regulates is the import or export of items that are on the U.S. munitions list. And that consists of 21 articles and it ranges anywhere from small arms up to missiles and even nuclear weapons. Big news is that category 1, 2, and 3 of the U.S. munitions list are being transitioned from the State Department and Department of Defense over to the Commerce Control List, which is regulated by the Commerce Department and the BIS. So. Those three items cover, uh, Article 1 is uh, firearms or close assault weapons and combat shotguns. Uh, the second one is guns and arm armament. And the third one covers uh, ammunition and ordnance. So what this means uh, is that basically for exporters, um, you're going to see pretty big changes, but also for importers as well. Okay. That how is that going to be affecting the common guy, or is it only for manufacturers and transporters? So, if you're involved in the small arms uh, industry, it's going to affect pretty much everybody. Okay. Um, for exporters, you're going to see a rapid increase in opportunities overseas because it's going to be a lot easier to to export uh, small arms and ammunition. Currently. Uh, if you're uh, exporting uh, items that are on the USML, uh, consisting of small arms that are worth over a million dollars, you have to seek congressional approval, which is a very long process, and you know there's a lot of red tape, and it creates expense. So for that reason, a lot of companies won't export uh, won't export their goods. Um, but, now, but let me get in this. But now that releases that, and so it makes it a lot easier for us to export our weapons. For some of them, significant military equipment will still be uh, regulated by the Department of Defense and automatic weapons. But for a lot of semi-automatic weapons, it, it it will be much easier to export. Um, again, you won't need the ITAR DOD State Department approval. You'll just need a license from the BIS and the Commerce Department. Are those hard to get? Uh, it's much easier than than going through the Department of Defense process. Uh, the Commerce Department is just a lot easier to deal with, much more user friendly. What about importers? So for importers, uh, the I mean. The major change again is it's it's going to obviously be easier if you don't have items that are on the ITAR because they're just less restricted. You have to be very careful about even information uh, if you're dealing with items that are on the ITAR. For example, uh, you know specs for ammunition, things like that. Um, in the past, they've had this deemed export rule, which uh, the way it works is essentially if you are involved with uh, ITAR regulated items and you have somebody that comes into your factory here in the US by f by just by the fact that they are a uh, foreigner holding a foreign passport and you are dealing it with an ITAR regulated item letting them walk through your factory and seeing this information is considered a deemed export even though it occurs on US soil so you know that creates a lot of red tape and again it's it's a lot of work to to deal with these rules and if you no longer have items that are on that munitions list it obviously makes things a lot easier for you. That sounds to me like we might be seeing a, a price decrease to the end user because of this re regulation release. 
I think for sporting arms and sporting ammunition, uh, semi-auto, uh, for sure, you will see uh, a decrease. Um, there's going to be more competition, more companies mm -hmm. in there, which you know should result in a, a decrease in price for the end consumer. Uh, I would think both domestically and abroad. Aside from the price, anything else in the future you see that people need to be aware of because of these changes that have been made? Yeah, I think that you're going to see faster product development. Um, you know, in the past, we've helped companies, um, you know, roll out new products. And for example, if you're creating a scope and you need information about uh, ballistics, uh, you know, for your reticle and your scope, if you're a foreign company, it's it's tricky to get that information because that's technically going to be ITAR controlled in certain circumstances. So. I think you'll see faster product development. I also think you'll see, again, increased competition domestically and uh, here within the U.S. market as well. Great. Thanks for bringing us up to speed on that. Thank you, Michael. All right. If there's anybody out there that this kind of content falls in the topics that you need to deal with, please contact Jarrett. Thanks for watching CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorby, your host.